I'm Jack Dominic for CET Connect. I'm back with John Ruthven. John has just returned from the panhandle of Florida in his uh, search, I won't say never ending because I'm sure it's going to, uh, it's going to end, for the ivory built woodpecker. Right. And uh, John, you were sharing with, with me earlier the, the fact that when you went down to these swamps, and I think we do have the photos, but we really don't need them. Yep. As a, how do you go about, you know, you got this square, how many square miles of 60 square 60 miles. 60 square miles. How do you go about f f looking for something there and not, you know, repeating mm -hmm. and all of that? Well, it was very scientific, Jack, and our leader, uh, Dr. Hill, had uh, very systematically gridded out the area that we were going to explore. Each one of us had to walk in a straight line through 10 miles of swamp with a GPS. Okay, 50, so you had GPSs. 50 feet apart with a map and with our compasses and our binoculars. We were not only charting out, we categorized every single tree that had a hole in it or a feeding uh, chip on it or something like so that. So certain things in the tree would lead you to believe that there yeah. was a bird present or right. we was saw, a bird? We saw lots of ivory-billed woodpecker holes. They had to have been. They were big because enough. Because of the size. The size, and we saw lots of pileated, and a lot of them were old. A lot of them were fresh as anything with chips at the bottom of the tree. Remind me again uh, for, uh, mm -hmm. how big this bird is. Well, it has a 32-inch wing spread. So 32, so over just about a yard. Almost, yeah, a little short. About a meter. Right yeah, now. and he's gorgeously beautiful. Intense black and intense white with a flaming red top. Uh -huh. So and you can't, if you see one, oh, you, you, you know you saw it. You know you saw. I know every nuance of that bird, and when I see him, I know I'm going to see him. Okay. So, but, so you're, you're in the swamp. You, you were with how many folks this well, time? Well, there were, there were 14, or this time, there were 15 with us, but there were 14, and we, were, uh, we divided up into twos with one GPS with each two people, okay. and then one person carried the GPS, the other the compass, okay. to keep on a straight line. We were 50 feet from the next line, mm -hmm. and we concentrated on going down that for, for 10 miles. Wow, and, it's and a long day. It. And I was sketching trees, I was sketching <laughs> all kinds of things, and then when we find a, a likely tree with a hole in yeah. it or marks on it, mm -hmm. or where they were feeding, mm -hmm. we put a, a, a metal tag, tap it into the tree. Okay, and then make a, a notation of yeah. the longitude and latitude yeah. so they so That's someone it. would be able to and then go we would pick there. up either hopefully feathers or droppings because okay. we have the DNA of these birds. Oh, okay. They so were able to extract the DNA from study specimens that were in museums. So okay. they have that, and all they have to do now scientifically is match up the droppings or the DNA from the feathers. So we had bags full of droppings. We were on a kind of a, <laughs> a, a honey dipper, a honey <laughs> dipper trip. See. And, and, and again, for uh, the, my my memory, mm -hmm. this bird was last seen and photographed in 1944. Yeah. So it's been since from 44 to about 2004 yeah. that that it hadn't been seen and it's only been It had been time. seen but not photographed and pure science doesn't believe it that's unless you get a, <laughs> a, a, a photograph. That's right. That's and right. that's what we're after. And, and, and you know the fascinating thing is is that in, in our uh, you know day and age now you know, everybody has a camera, and, and it's so easy. Mm. And, and to think that in, our, in, in you know, it certainly is rural. I mean, we're in the oh. Panhandle and, and in Arkansas, et cetera. But nevertheless, we're, we're, you know, there's still lots of people around. And the fact that a bird like this could have existed uh, is, a, a is, is a really thing. amazing. All of us had, G, uh, we had uh, video cameras, still cameras. Mm -hmm. We were ready. We were ready. <laughs> but we're going to the big thing, the, the nesting season, as I mentioned, is the last of March, 1st of okay. February, and then the bird has to perch next to a hole, say. Oh, okay. And so, so, so it has to when, stay still a little bit yeah, longer. It's, it's just a matter of time before the photograph. It'll be a world-shaking world event. When so happens. are you going back in the spring? Oh, yeah, I'm going back. Where, do you, are you going to Florida or I'm Arkansas? I'm going to Florida. Florida. I think the, uh, the, the amount of birds is greater in Florida. Now I say that with <laughs> great trepidation because I love the guys in Arkansas. I'm sure. going back to Arkansas too, and sure. they've done a wonderful job. Right. There are fewer birds there, I think. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, John. When uh, when you go in the spring, uh, yeah. make take copious pictures and right. bring them back because I you're, you're going to come back and, and we'll, we'll talk about it more. I'll look forward to it, Jack. Okay. 
John Ruffin, uh, of course we all know John for his wonderful artwork, his wonderful wildlife painting, and, and now we know John and his Explorers Club uh, ventures, and, and real exciting to have a, a Greater Cincinnatian so involved in, in this exploration. So uh, we'll look forward to seeing John in, uh, sometime in the, in the spring, and hopefully we'll see some photographs. I'm Jack Dominic for CET Connect.